What does it mean to automate our social phenomena? Who gets to build AI? How can we ensure accessibility for all? What are the human aspects of technology? Impacting people is something that we have to think about when we write or when we develop or when we engineer a software application. It's really important that technology doesn't discriminate and is inclusive. We're aware that we're forming the technologists and software engineers and the IT specialists of tomorrow. And one thing that we really want to give them is a sense of the consequences behind their decisions. Who is it going to benefit? And who is going to be impacted by this particular piece of software? Often on the tech side, we're optimizing for things like accuracy. You could have 99% accuracy and think that you're doing a great job. But that 1% is made up of the millions and millions of people whose lives can be thrown off their trajectory because of the model that you're building. And often, they're already marginalized from society. If the problem doesn't affect you, you are very unlikely to notice the problem itself. In a sense, uh, black women are most impacted by AI systems, so they see the problem and they have the lived experience to notice these problems. So they have no option but to lead in this space because they are personally impacted when AI systems go wrong. Tell me about the impact of your tiny images work. You need huge data sets in order to build any current you know, machine learning AI system. And until we had scrutinized and looked into the large image data sets, which is called tiny images, there was no audit work before we did that. So as you know, data sets are really important for training and validating AI systems, which includes like object recognition, face recognition systems. Uh, and in auditing the tiny images data set, uh, what myself and my collaborator found was that uh, there was thousands and thousands of images of people, sometimes objects, labeled with uh, racial slurs, with offensive terminology, um, so when you train your AI using those image data sets, you end up with racist and, and misogynist AI. And the reaction was actually really immediate. Um, MIT took down tiny images um, data set and they asked the community if they have any copies of the data to delete it. Sometimes it feels like computer vision moves so quickly, it's almost like we don't have time to kind of keep up with those ethical concerns, but it shows that if we take the time to do that work, people will respond. Exactly, yeah, yeah. The impact is huge. It's opened my eyes on the consequences of creating algorithms based on data sets containing this particular type of data. Being able to have open discussions and in-depth discussions around AI ethics while we're working on these projects has been really huge. We've been partnering with Microsoft's Skype for Good program, NetHope and the Norwegian Refugee Council to build a learning companion chatbot for conflict-affected youth in Syria and Lebanon. Right at the beginning, before we ever even built a prototype, we wanted to involve youth on the ground in Lebanon. And at every step of the way, we allowed them to interact with the chatbot and they gave us really helpful feedback. That's good, that's not good, there's something missing. They didn't like the name of the first chatbot, for instance. We didn't think it would be important, it was for them. At the same time, there's a lot of information you do want to collect. There's a lot of information that you want to keep private and that you want to make sure that is not going to be used by governments or other institutions. Okay, so you had a question about QR codes, right? It can be incredibly isolating for already marginalized groups, older adults who can't navigate smartphone apps, for example, who are then faced with technology that is pervasive and almost required to use to participate in society, but to be excluded from that. Do you know if you had a link and you clicked on it, it would take you somewhere, but it wouldn't store the link. QR code's the same. I've been very lucky with my students because they are passionate about their research. I can see them becoming experts technically and also leaders in their domains. Working with Anthony and this team has been amazing. We are not the typical group of people you would find in a typical AI or computer science lab. 
Anthony just provides that positive environment that allows you to thrive. And, you know, kindness comes before any competition. We are safe to assume that the, the software we are building or that the AI we are interacting is likely to be problematic and biased unless we have done the work of removing or mitigating for those issues. It's really important that we are including these communities and people with lived experience who understand the nuance of those problems in the design phase of these AI models. Because when you don't, you end up optimizing for things that can actually cause harm. If you're trying to make a solution for some community, they're who you need to be working with and who you need to have in the room.